Hello again, folks. Well, the skies have cleared a little bit. The storm has passed and I am off. <laughs> I sure do love the beginning of a journey. And I have a pretty epic one in mind. <laughs> if you are new to my channel, uh, let me just say that I am a lifelong collector who has spent a lot of enjoyable time uh, searching for collectibles and thrift stores and and uh, estate sales and anywhere I can find them and uh, several years ago now I stumbled upon my lifelong uh, hobby and the one that brings me the most joy and that's stamps <laughs> and currently I am on a quest to find one of every USA stamp that I can find <laughs> and that's been fun. Uh, but that's not what today's journey is about. Uh, when I started my uh, collecting when I was a boy, I uh, fell in love with books, with collectible books. I found a first edition Confederacy of Dunces at a uh, bookstore when I was 13 and that launched me in my journey and then when I left college I spent some really enjoyable months being a picker <laughs> it wasn't called picking back then it was just me going to random places in search of uh, collectibles mostly books and then selling them on eBay and it was a hoot I absolutely loved it. Well, uh, the other day, I got around to wondering if that's still a thing. <laughs> if it's still possible to find uh, gems in Goodwills, specifically. And one of the reasons why I wonder is that Goodwills have become really good at... Uh, putting their at finding their own collectibles and putting them on their website and and good for them they're a great organization and I love supporting them um, and so a lot of their you know finer collectibles end up on their website so are there still treasures to be found in stores and I to, to begin with I need to define what a gem is to me because my circumstances are a little different than uh, what they were uh, when I was a young man. I am still uh, very much interested in collectibles, in books. I love uh, video games, classic video games. Uh, you know, just collectibles. I'm, I'm looking for something with value. But it's not all about, oh, and, and of course, I'm looking for stamps. <laughs> And specifically, things that I can use to store my stamps. That's what I'm hoping to find at Goodwills. <laughs> um, uh, but it's not all about me. Uh, and, and, and that's a great thing. So I'm also looking for Christmas presents for my two kids and for my wife and for my dog. <laughs> so that's a treasure to me. I hope they appreciate the thought that I will put into finding just the right treasure for them. And then the last category I have in mind is homestead. <laughs> I, uh, I've shared elsewhere on my channel that my, uh, my family immigrated uh, a few generations ago and they became farmers. And, you know... There is a lot of the homesteading uh, passion in my DNA, <laughs> and I and so I have been converting my home in a metro area into something of a hobby farm. <laughs> and the neighbors are cool with it, just so you know. Uh, and so I will be looking for things that advance my efforts to homestead in uh, in a city. All right, so those are the treasures I seek, and uh, <laughs> I have no idea how long it will take me, uh, but it's going to be fun, and I am 
tremendously excited to be launching this journey. And I do see brighter skies on the horizon. I have a window of time before the next wave comes in. So here's hoping I get to Lakeville. Onward. <laughs> we are a couple of Goodwills in, and Junior got his uh, Halloween costume, and he's a pirate. But you know who the big winner is? The big winner is your mom. But she doesn't know it yet. So she's... Uh, Should I show him? No, not yet. I'm going to show all of my Goodwill finds at the end of the video. Uh, so she's she's gotten some really great Christmas presents. But you want to know something? What? She doesn't like it when I buy her presents from Goodwill. <laughs> It's funny because she's, she loves going to thrift stores, but for some reason she doesn't think I should find a Christmas present at Goodwill. I don't know. <laughs> and he found a present for my mom at Goodwill. Well, but you know what the trick is? What? You gotta find new stuff. It's gotta be new in the box. And uh, so far she is the big winner because I've discovered some things that I would not have thought about had I not found them on the shelf at the Goodwill. And they are new. <laughs> All right, onward. So we're, uh, we're on a, a hunt, you and I. Big time. Big time. <laughs> you like going to Goodwills. Love it. What, what do you look for when you uh, go to Goodwill's? All the crafty items I can handle. All the crafty items you can handle. What kind of crafts are you into these days? The usual. My sewing, my pottery, my macrame. That's cool. Have I ever told you about my... Uh, greatest goodwill find. You can answer truthfully. We've only been married. We've only been married 15 years. Probably not. <laughs> I still have stories you haven't heard. <laughs> oh, probably not, actually. <laughs> so, this was, uh, this was back uh, during the days of our first apartment together. That wonderful I was working at the cell phone joint. I hated that job so much. And uh, I would go to the Goodwill next door on my lunch breaks. And one time I walk in and there's a big bin uh, full of books that somebody had rolled out into the aisle but hadn't uh, put them on the shelves yet. And so I go diving in and uh, in the towards the bottom, I found a uh, hardcover Hobbit. It wasn't a first printing; it was a later printing, but it was a true hardcover Hobbit with uh, the map in the back. It was the coolest book I ever found at uh, Goodwill. And I, uh, when I started this little journey, I wondered if I could still find. Uh, books like that, you know, the real rare ones. And lo and behold, on my first, uh, on my first stop, I found one. And today I will obviously be looking for books. But you know what I'm looking for today? What? Today is about stamps. No. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Surprise. I don't know that there is a word for that. <laughs> or how I feel. I don't know. Something new. <laughs> Alright, onward. Thank you, my dear. So it is going to be 90 degrees today. And, um, and I am about to cross over uh, Summit Avenue in St. Paul, which is was supposed to be the site of the Twin Cities Marathon 
and it uh, got canceled because of the extreme heat. And my heart goes out to everyone who uh, worked all year in preparation for that marathon, and I am hopeful that they will find another way to uh, culminate that effort and to uh, celebrate. It got me thinking this morning, though. You know, the um, it's got to be the journey, not the destination, right? You know, if you uh, if you don't like the steps it takes to get somewhere. <laughs> It, getting there isn't going to be nearly rewarding enough to make up for it. It's just not. You know, I was, uh, I, I, I remember once asking a mentor if I should go to law school. And their response to me was, do you want to go to law school? <laughs> and I thought, oh, wait, maybe I want to be a lawyer. And, uh, but they said, no, do you want to go to law school? Because if you don't, the, you know, the finish line isn't going to make up for the misery you have to deal with. And, uh, and so I'm thinking about that as it relates to this little journey I'm on. You know, I'm doing this not for the uh, treasures that I'll find, and uh, though they've been cool. <laughs> but uh, the real treasure, you know, was watching my boy's face uh, light up when he found his Halloween costume and uh, having uh, a, a good uh, activity for a date uh, with my wife. All of which is to say that I am pleased with what I have found so far, and uh, but I'm most thrilled about the journey. Well, I'm off to visit my last Goodwill. <laughs> It has been fun. I have taken a total of five trips. Uh, two with children, one with my wife, and two on my own. And it's been a wonderful journey. I, I really do like a quest. I like the hunting and gathering of collectibles. It's just been a good time. One of the things that I haven't uh, talked about yet is the fact that I am a nonprofit administrator. And I have been for several decades now. I um, I believe very strongly in the importance of nonprofit institutions, and uh, Goodwill is one of them. Um, and one of the things that oftentimes gets overlooked when it comes to nonprofits is the fact that we need to operate like a business. Uh, we need to have cost centers and cost margins and business plans and strategies. Otherwise, we won't be able to do the work in the communities that we want to. And Goodwill is a very successful business. Uh, so when it comes to finding treasures in their thrift stores, um, they are very well aware of the values that they find <laughs> and the treasures that they find. And the good stuff goes online. I mean, that's just the truth and more power to them. Uh, I want the, uh, the revenue that they're able to raise uh, to go to the good employment work that they do. And, uh, and I think that, you know, when I look at the, the 20 years since I spent uh, time actually trying to make a buck or two off of thrift store finds, one of the biggest changes has been the sophistication of Goodwill specifically. Um, now, that being said, what I wasn't exactly anticipating was how many great things I would find. <laughs> there, you know, there are certainly finds still to be had, and when I get home, I'll do my big reveal of the, the treasures I found, and I'll also give tips and tricks for how you can find yours. Um, but they're out there. Uh, in spite of the fact that there are so many people who are uh, picking, as it's called these days, and, uh, and Goodwill has gotten good at uh, building out their website, there still are very much treasures to be found, and it was a joy to do that. Uh, and then I, I will also mention that um, I've made a significant donation to Goodwill <laughs> After this, I, after, after my uh, last uh, uh, stop, the cashier asked me uh, if I would like to make a donation, and I made a sizable one because I do value 
uh, their work, and I'm appreciative of the finds that I've made in the past uh, few weeks. Uh, so I just wanted that knowing that I did that. <laughs> All right, so here's hoping I get uh, that last stop mojo, the last stop luck. It's the same thing as uh, going fishing, you know, it's your last cast. <laughs> Let's see if my last stop brings me any great luck. All right, onward. And I am back, and now is when I share my treasures with you, as well as a little bit of advice for all of you interested in thrifting. It was a tremendously fun journey, and I am really glad I did it. I am going to begin by showing you uh, something that I'm very excited to add to my collection. I collect vintage paperbacks, specifically science fiction stories. And this is Andre Norton's The X Factor, uh, printed in 1965. I don't see uh, vintage paperbacks all that often at Goodwills. I was very excited to see this one. I love that art. Um, my first piece of advice for all of you looking to find gems at Goodwills and thrift stores is to pay attention to condition. Condition is absolutely everything and not just for collectibles. So this isn't as well known as some of the other paperbacks that I saw on my journey, but it's brand new. It is absolutely pristine. And so that makes it more rare than other collect other paperbacks from the sixties and makes it collectible and therefore one that I'm thrilled to have on my shelf. So per first piece of advice, focus on, uh, condition. One of the uh, categories that I was looking at were books. And I have to say, all in all, I, uh, I think they've gotten really good at finding books and uh, putting them online. I did not find all that many uh, rare and collectible books, but I did find this one. Uh, this is John Gershom's first uh, novel, A Time to Kill. Again, it's the condition that does it for me. It is almost new. Um, when you're looking for a collectible book, you're going to want the first edition. You're going to want the first printing. And you're going to want to make sure that there is a price on the dust jacket. That shows that it is not a book club edition. And then when you flip to the inside cover, you will on the, the copyright page... You're going to want to look for a one on the number line at the bottom there. Most uh, different publishers are different, but the one signifies that this is the first printing, first edition, and so therefore the most collectible version of this book, other than maybe a signature, that sort of thing. So, you know, it's a nice collectible copy. I don't know how many fans of John Grisham don't have a first edition of Time to Kill, so not the biggest of all finds, but that is a nice collectible book. I am going to save the big book I found for the end. It is the highlight of my journey, so I will save it for the last. I also found this one, and this is unique. Uh, another thing to keep in mind when looking for books and for looking for other kinds of media is things that are uh, limited runs, limited printings, unique historic items and this fits that bill so this is sotheby's auction house printing of the catalog and the uh estate of jacqueline kennedy onassis uh, they auctioned off all of her items and this is you know a, a beautiful coffee table book of uh all of her uh estate that they then put at auction and, you know, I can see this appealing to a lot of different collectors, a lot of different fans of Onassis, but also just of history. And, you know, where else are you going to see uh, that, <laughs> for example? And so there's just kind of some fascinating things, you know, uh, inlaid signatures and all kinds of cool things in this book. So I thought this was pretty neat. Um, 
retail price on this when they printed it. This is the hardcover limited edition run was $90. I don't think you would get that on the secondary market, but nonetheless, that's a pretty cool find. I paid $2.99. So those were the first three books that I'll show, and I will save the fourth for the end. As I shift to the next category, I think I will focus on video games. Let me say that I spent a total of $87.14. I drove 96 miles, and I spent $42 in gas. And throughout that journey, this is the one video game that I found. <laughs> I, I looked in every single DVD slash uh, video game section in each of the 16 Goodwills, and I found this one. <laughs> so if you're looking for video games, uh, used video games, don't go to Goodwill. They are gone. <laughs> they are absolutely gone. They're, it, back in the day, I would find uh, used in classic video games, you know, PlayStation 2, that sort of thing. I saw virtually none. Uh, I thought maybe my boy and I could play this, so I picked it up for, I think, $2.99. So that was my first uh, discovery, was that video games are no longer <laughs> uh, readily available on shelves. I did, uh, while I was in the DVD section, look for another thing I collect, which are Criterion Collection films. And I found this one. I love Chasing Amy, Kevin Smith. I mean, uh, a signature part of my childhood was watching Kevin Smith films. Uh, Criterion Collection, if you don't know, are absolutely phenomenal. They do a wonderful job putting the film together and then adding to it all kinds of special features and a nice packaging. Um, here's a pro tip for you. When you're searching DVD sections and Goodwills, you can train your eye to pay attention to the bottom section of the fill of the box. Uh, I was looking for criterion collection. You can also look for other kinds of special editions. And when you're running your eyes across a big shelf of DVDs, this will stand out. And if you're just looking at this section, you'll be able to gloss over the other ones. If you're looking for collectible DVDs and you don't have all that much time. So I was pleased to find uh, Chasing Amy. I also found another wonderful film, uh, Royal Tannenbaum's Criterion Collection. You know, these aren't the most valuable, uh, but I certainly think they were worth $2.99. Very cool. And then my favorite DVD I found was this one. Uh, this is the director's edition, uh, almost famous, a phenomenal film, the bootleg cut. So this is one of those kinds of special releases, um, that I think to the right collector. Oh, and always, by the way, be sure to, uh, make sure that the DVDs are in there and that they're not scratched. Uh, but this is just such a phenomenal film. And I love I love collecting hard copies of things that I can't find on streaming services, but also that have uh, special features that you won't find anywhere else. So this has a this actually has a, a CD of uh, a, of Stillwater songs, which was the band that produced the soundtrack for this. That's very cool to me. Um, so that was a very cool DVD find. Uh, on my DVD categories for this search. All right, so uh, I will now shift to the stamps. <laughs> I, you know, I, I had some luck. I found this, which I am going to use to store my souvenir sheets. I have been looking for a storage solution for souvenir sheets, and this is going to be perfect. <laughs> I think I will use uh, glassine envelopes like this, and I will store them like that, and that works perfectly. So I was pretty excited to see this. Once again, condition. I also found two albums that I will use. This one is a Bombay wooden cover with interleave sheets. Very, very cool. Very high end. Um, 
as it turns out, our state fair has a uh, stamp uh, contest for the best collection. <laughs> and I've long since dreamt of putting together something. And I might use this to put together a collection of, I don't know, space stamps or duck stamps or something. And, uh, and what a cool way to present it. So I thought this was, was a really cool opportunity to create an own personal album. Maybe I'll do my Chicago, actually. That wouldn't be for the State Fair. I could do my homeland or my hometown um, collection in this, too. All kinds of possibilities. But this is, uh, this is Bombay album, and it comes with uh, the mounts for pictures, presumably. But you could use them for stamps, too. So that was cool. I was really excited about this one. Retail price on this is about $40, by the way. Not that you get that used, but nonetheless, I was pleased. And one other uh, cool album that I might use for sheets, our wedding. It's not for a wedding, <laughs> but it's the artist's touch. Or I won't use it for a wedding. Again, a nice opportunity to display some things. Mint sheets, for example. Uh, so those were my three stamp-related finds, which I am quite pleased about. Now, moving into the homestead section. I was disappointed. I thought for sure I would find canning supplies, and I did not. But I found this! <laughs> it is a cast iron grill pan from Lodge, which is a very good uh, brand and it's cast iron so it lasts forever it I think it's probably been used like twice um, the home goods section in Goodwills were phenomenal that's where I found a lot of cool stuff including this guy again condition 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 this is new in box this is a deep fat fryer, perhaps not a good addition to my house. Uh, but every now and then you just want a donut and some french fries, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this is new in box, retail price $50. I think this was $15, the most I spent on any one item. But again, condition, new, very, very cool. And it's something we wanted, so uh, that's always good. It wasn't just a splurge. Moving into uh, uh, the gift category and a splurge. <laughs> I think this is number 13 on my treasures. <laughs> All right. I'll give you one guess what this is. <laughs> this is my dog's Halloween costume. <laughs> Ah, oh, he's going to hate it. He's going to chew it to shreds. <laughs> but look at that. I couldn't pass it up. I mean, look at that face. Oh, I love it. So that was a treasure along with my boy's uh, costume, which he probably wore to bed tonight. So I could not find it. <laughs> um, the second gift I found was this guy. This is so cool. Um... Again, new in box. Retail price is 50 bucks. Um, a wonderful present for my boy. He actually asked for a robot creating kit, was his exact words for Christmas. And lo and behold, I found this. So I am thrilled about that. If you're doing the math, yes, between this and the air fr and the deep fryer, I paid for my entire journey. And that, uh, that leaves the two best finds for last. There is this guy. Now, <laughs> while it's true my wife does not appreciate presents from Goodwill, <laughs> it is also true uh, that I never would have known this was a thing had I not found it at a Goodwill. And she is going to absolutely love it she uh dove into pottery during the pandemic and has become quite excellent at it and this even though it looks like a toy it is not i've done some research on it it will assist her in her uh her hobby uh greatly i think and i think she's going to be extremely excited 
Uh, retail price is 65 bucks, so that was a good find, new in box. Um, but again, it was, you know, just something that I didn't know existed. And now I have a present for her already off the list, so that's great. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, oh, I have two runners up. I was going to do runners up. I think all of that adds up to 16 total. Here's my runners up. Because it's the Godfather DVD collection, all three films with the bonus materials, the documentaries and all of that, that's just really cool. Uh, I love it. And second runner up uh, is this wonderful cookbook. She's fantastic. She has a blog. This book is awesome. It's new. Very exciting. All right. Now, last but not least. When I brought this to the cashier, he took one look at it and said that wasn't supposed to be on the shelf. <laughs> and I knew it wasn't supposed to be on the shelf. Um, but it was, and he sold it to me. And he said, books like that get a lot online. <laughs> and I, I said, yeah, well, I'm, I'm glad to have it. This was the time that I made the donation, by the way. So what this is, is unique. And that's not always the best thing in collecting books, especially. This is a book called Gottwald's Miscellanies. And it is truly one of a kind. It is one of one. And what I mean by that is it wasn't actually printed by a publishing company. It was printed by Gottwaltz. It was put, printed for him by someone. And on the inside, you'll see the library of Reverend L.A. Gottwald. And then I think that's his son. This book belongs to W.K. Uh, Gottwald. And then inside, bound in this very, very nice, very uh, expensively done book are writings of Gottwald along with a uh, transcript from his trial, trial of L.A. Gottwald. And when you, so there you go, a reply to the charges of my assailants. So when you Google him, as I did, you learn that he, uh, well, first of all, his Wikipedia page has like 25 pages on it. So he was a historical figure. He was in a battle in a Lutheran synod um, over his views, and they tried to expel him. And he went on to be quite a figure in the Lutheran church. And this book was either the college or somebody at some point put together his writings from various sources. You can see it's differently printed into this and presented it to him. So this, this, this truly is a piece of history. I do not know how historic he was because it's impossible for me to tell. I, there isn't a big Google search. But to the right collector of Lutheran church history, I mean, this is, this is a, a significant book. I did take it to an expert, and they confirmed for me what I knew, that, you know, it, as a truly one-of-a-kind book, it's almost impossible to monetize. To, not to monetize, but to put a price figure on it, because it's just in the eye of the beholder. Um so what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to keep it. I am going to put it on my shelf. I'm going to treasure it because he was quite a figure as you read up on him. And this was his book and his, his uh, writings compiled for him, presumably by the university or someone. Uh, so this is, this is just such a treasure and, uh, and found at a Goodwill. If you have any information on him or this book, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section below. 
So there you go. I think uh, my, you know, it's been 20 years since I spent a lot of time in Goodwills. Uh, I've gone because, you know, we enjoy shopping from time to time. And, you know, what I learned was that treasures absolutely still exist. And the key is uh, to know what you're looking for, to be patient, to uh, focus on condition, focus on the rare items, uh, learn as much as you can about the uh, the niche that you're diving into, um, and don't splurge. <laughs> um, but ultimately, for me, the goal was to have some fun. The goal was to get some Christmas presents, um, and to have a bit of a journey as I thought about my days looking for books like this. And, and I accomplished all of those. Hopefully you have learned a little bit on this uh, journey about uh, uh, the joy of thrifting and the importance of an organization like Goodwill. And uh, if you liked it, please go ahead and like the video and do subscribe to the channel. It means a great deal to me. Until next time. Take care.